Hello friends, welcome back to my lecture on introduction to aircraft structures. So we are still in uh, class one of uh, the course if you have aerostructures. So far I have been uh, talking to you on the various different components of the aircraft and uh, we have also uh, classified uh, those uh, components that have been identified as primary and uh, secondary structures and in this session I am going to continue speaking on the design and construction aspect of the uh, primary components of the aircraft whatever we have identified uh, in the last session like uh, wings, fuselage, landing gear and power plants power plants are nothing but the engines to give you a very quick uh, recap, uh, the primary structures include fuselage, wings, stabilizers, landing gear and nacelles and the engines and the secondary structures include uh, interior structures which are galley monuments, auxiliary power units and the cabin systems such as avionics, pressurization systems and all other electronics. And I have also explained their uh, functionalities, what are all their functionalities of the different uh, primary structures and uh, I have also explained the the physics behind the generation of the lift uh, to remind you of the same uh, whenever uh, an uh, airplane uh, whenever, whenever the aircraft is moving forward in the air stream the upper surface of the wing the air stream on the upper surface of the wing creates a low pressure region whereas the air stream on the lower uh, surface of the wing creates a high pressure region and the air molecules from the high pressure region tends to move to the low pressure region just generating the lift. The cross section of the wing is uh, referred to as airfoil or aerofoil and uh, I have also explained to you the aircraft uh, loadings what are all the loadings uh, a, a general aircraft structure is subjected to external loads are uh, classified into flight loads ground loads and the loads from the engines and uh, these are all the internal uh, stresses or internal loads the, that are developed within the aircraft structure to resist the external applied loads so the various types of uh, internal loadings are tension, compression, torsion, shear and bending. It depends on the load direction. Tension is the pulling effect, compression is the pushing effect and torsion is the twisting effect and shear is uh, shearing off or ripping and bending is uh, hogging and sogging which is uh, the surface is bent. So these internal loads or internal stresses develop uh, on the structure whenever there is an external application of force in mode and uh, it is a way that the structures try to develop these internal forces in order to resist the external force. When the internal force developed is uh, well within the strength of the material, the, the, the material stays safe or when it exceeds the material fails. So we will uh, later in the course we are going to discuss more on this. So at the minute uh, we will move on to the next uh, slide which is the primary motion of the aircraft. So uh, each aircraft has three primary motions or in general an aircraft has three primary motions which are pitching, rolling and yawing. Pitching uh, is during the takeoff and landing that is when, whenever the aircraft is going up or down. There are a few <clears throat> before we see two other uh, primary motions there are uh, few uh, control surfaces there are few uh, panels that control these motions within an aircraft those are called control surfaces. These control surfaces are aileron, elevator and rudder. Aileron is responsible for rolling, elevator is responsible for pitching and rudder is responsible for yawing. As I mentioned uh, pitch is up going up and down, rolling is the maneuvering uh, aspect of the aeroplane. So whenever an aircraft is in flight 
whenever uh, the pilot wants to take a turn or whenever the flight wants to take a turn uh, pilot deploys the aileron and then yawing is generally on the ground whenever uh, the flight is turning to the left or flight is turning to the right they use the rudder uh, surface these control surfaces are nothing but yeah, flat panels mostly they are honeycomb sandwich panels or uh, just uh, normal metallic panels these uh, control surfaces are operated using uh, servo mechanisms in the mean a typical modern day aircraft something like this so they use uh, uh, hydraulic or pneumatic servo actuation mechanisms in olden days they used to use the mechanical linkages and uh, tied up using the rods and wires they used to operate that manually so now these uh, control surfaces this motion of the control surfaces or uh, now uh, tied up to the uh, flight uh, navigation and uh, control system flight control systems where uh, they monitor each and every <clears throat> moment of these control surfaces to an accurate angle to uh, achieve the desired result in the motion of the aircraft so moving on to the next is the modern day passenger plane as i uh, mentioned earlier in my last session these uh, modern day planes have uh, a variety of uh, uh, control surfaces to start with uh, the control surfaces on the wing or uh, spoilers flaps ailerons these again these are all flat panel uh, uh, you can say like uh, flat panel shaped uh, small uh, surfaces they are attached to the wing uh, using uh, they are, and again they are actuated using the servo mechanisms spoilers when deployed they create a, a huge drag thereby reducing the velocity and acceleration of the flight spoilers are used during the landing and the flaps are uh, used during the takeoff what happens is like when the when uh, flaps are deployed they just extend the outer edge of the wing and thereby increasing the surface area of the wing and thereby generating more lift more the surface area more the pressure acted and the more the lift generated and uh, ailerons as i mentioned uh, earlier uh, in my previous slide uh, that the ailerons um, uh, control the rolling motion of the aircraft and maneuverability of the aircraft so also you can uh, notice one thing over uh, here in the modern day aircraft they have a very very small uh, uh, flat panel uh, surfaces called taps these taps balance tab and anti balance tab on the rudder and uh, again elevator has the uh, small uh, rectangular uh, panel surface called uh, elevator tab the rectangular panels called elevator tab and these kind of uh, taps what they do is they do the corrective action like uh, suppose um, uh, when uh, uh, when the instruction from the ground crew is given to the uh, pilot saying that uh, he has to achieve 30 degrees or 35 degrees rotation so suppose uh, whenever he is uh, rotating the uh, airplane using his uh, stick so he he couldn't uh, visualize what is the 35 degrees these balance taps then come into picture because of the sensors and um, flight control systems these balance when this balance tab will accurately uh, correct the uh, rolling motion or rolling is action so that uh, precisely 35 degrees would be achieved so what happens is whenever then aircraft rolls or whenever aircraft uh, goes up and down the sensors in the aircraft they detect the movement and they give an accurate information of how, ma how many degrees they rotate or how much degrees they go up and down so if they go excess suppose the pilot uh, desires to go to uh, go roll the aircraft to 35 degrees or go up 
suppose it goes to 40 degrees then uh, the you would be using these balance stamps automatically to reduce and bring it back to 35 degrees so this balance these stamps are nothing but the uh, flat uh, rectangular panels that uh, that are mainly used for corrective action to achieve the desired uh, motion of the aircraft and uh, slowly moving on to the uh, primary structures in terms of construction aspect first we are going to look at the fuselage structure from the pictures you can visualize that uh, there are hardly uh, three or four types of uh, fuselage structures in terms of construction and uh, this one goes back to the history and the recent modern day planes have uh, these type of constructions on them so primarily there are two types that have been used so far which is monocoque and semi monocoque and in the recent decade or recent, recent for the past 50 60 years only one type is used which is semi monocoque <clears throat> so i'm going to explain the difference to you truss type is the uh, very old uh, say some somewhere in the 1900s and uh, 1940s 1950s they were they, they were this kind of uh, construction were used these are like uh, a combination of rods and tubes that have been welded together or braced together or spliced together uh, braced is nothing but uh, tying up and then uh, splicing is nothing but it might be a riveted joint or it might be a bolted joint or welded is like welding uh, done using welding and it's a welded joint so what they have been doing is like they use the combination of rods and tubes in a truss type arrangement and then skin panels go on top of it and it forms the fuselage <clears throat> it's obviously the weak structure because there is no uh, enough load distribution happening uh, within those type of uh, structure and the aircraft can't go reach a uh, higher altitude with these type of structures and coming to the monocoque structure monocoque uh, is uh, like a skin panel which is uh, also called as shells along with the frames these frames act as yeah, stiffening members for these skins skins take in plane axial stresses and also shear stresses frames take the shear stresses and the flanges of these frames they take the bending again this is uh, again this with this type of construction the aircraft is still weak because there is no enough uh, catering uh, that uh, comes in place for the distribution of the loading uh, when the aircraft is subjected to various different conditions out there on the environmental conditions and uh, coming to semi monocoque semi monocoque uh, type of construction has uh, frames skins something similar to monocoque in addition to that they have uh, uh, longitudinal frames as well both lateral and longitudinal frames Ra longitudinal frames running from uh, fore and aft uh, like uh, along the lengthways of the fuselage so various different uh, structural members are uh, skin skin panels obviously which is called as shells shell elements so these skins take in plane axial stresses yeah axial stresses in the sense both tension and compression and in plane shear stresses and frames they take shear loading the flanges of these frames they take uh, axial loading and coming to the longitudinal members we have longerons and stringers longerons are uh, uh, both longerons and stringers or uh, a type of beams that run fore and aft or along the lengthways of the uh, fuselage these uh, both uh, longeron and stringer they take primarily bending so there is an effective redistribution of the loads happening 
whenever uh, an aircraft is in flight or whenever what kind of loading they are subjected to the loads uh, redistribute themselves very nicely within the structure because uh, more or less we are covered because uh, the frames uh, to list you down again frames take the shear and uh, they also take torsion and uh, they keep the they maintain the shape of the fuselage and uh, langerons and stringers take the bending and spins take the in plane axial stresses and the in plane shear stresses and if you look at the frames they are uh, i section beams or sometimes channel section beams but they are uh, in a circular uh, shape they are circular uh, beams and uh, langerons and stringers might be channel section beams or z section beams and sometimes hat section beams and uh, and skin and skin panel might be a metallic or uh, composite skin panels one thing uh, what i you have to notice is that uh, in a modern day aircraft something like this uh, the fuselage structure is uh, not manufactured as a single piece it doesn't uh, it's not possible for them to manufacture as a single piece because of the length and because of the complexities involved usually what they do is like uh, they make the forward piece which is the cockpit piece separate and uh, there might be a mid fuselage and there might be an aft fuselage so at least uh, two or more is definite so two or more pieces sometimes uh, for example boeing uh, 737 or boeing 747 aircrafts which is quite lengthy they make even the mid fuselage into two or three pieces mid one and mid two and then coming to the aft aft fuselage uh, comprises of the tail cone section this is called tail cone this is nose tail cone this is vertical stabilizer and this is horizontal stabilizer so when uh, these as aft portion of the fuselage is also called as empennage 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 uh, comprises of tail cone vertical and uh, horizontal stabilizers tail cone has a similar type of uh, engine which is uh, which is a miniature in engine which is also called as auxiliary power unit apu this auxiliary power unit is responsible for the generation of the power to for all the aircraft lightings for aircraft chilling systems and cooling systems and those kind of things one thing uh, you have to notice here is that uh, on this picture like uh, they on this aircraft the engines are mounted onto the fuselage they are not mounted onto the wing this greatly uh, impact the performance characteristic of the aircraft so when it is each one has its own advantages and disadvantages when it is mounted on the wing and when it is mounted on the fuselage when it is mounted on the fuselage the nose and the vibration from the engine directly passed on to the fuselage structure so it experiences a greater amount of vibration or when it is mounted on the wing it passed on to the wing structure so wing should be really strong in order to take those uh, loadings now having uh, spoken about the fuselage structure so we will slowly move into the function of the uh, fuselage structures like uh, as mentioned several times the primary structure of an aircraft they help in transmitting and resisting the loads that uh, that an aircraft is subjected to and also it provides an aerodynamic shape and also it provides the protects the contents like passengers and cargo or uh, the payload basically from the outside environment so basically the two types of the fuselage which is monocoque and uh, semi monocoque type so monocoque is like a thin shell without any stiffening members or just with frames and semi monocoque is the modern day aircraft fuselage uh, construction type 
where it has a skin, a lot of frames, uh, and stiffeners, and also the longitude and stiffeners, both lateral, lateral are the frames, and the longitudinal are the longerons and uh, stringers. And you might be wondering, what is this bulkhead? Bulkhead is nothing but the uh, the one which is on the very front and the one which is on the very back. The, uh, it is the frame. It is the circular frame which is on the very, very front. On the very front and it will be on the very back. These bulkheads are really strong. They help in uh, retaining the vacuum pressure or the uh, cabin pressure. Um, and uh, they don't uh, they are really strong in uh, uh, they are usually like concave shaped yeah uh, disc like uh, something similar to your disc antenna and uh, it's a yeah, drum type uh, kind of uh, structure so what they do is like they they, they take the uh, cabin pressure loads completely and uh, passed and uh, redistribute to the other part of the structures